Kitty cat feet. Kitty cat feet. Hey, booktube, it's Kim at middle of the book march. This is a gigantor My Bookish Week for uh, Saturday 8 14 21. I think this may be bigger than my overstuffed Bookish Week last weekend, so let's get going. I finished six books. Finished, not read, finished six books. The first one um, I listened to on audio, and that is Homie from Denez Smith. Uh, I read Don't Call Us Dead last year. I listened to it over audio, and it was excellent. This collection is Smith's collection of poetry and spoken word art regarding friendship, and more, more specifically, black friendship. They have had a friend or possibly multiple friends or acquaintances that either died or were killed, and they discuss and do spoken word art poetry about what those friendships meant and how the community of, of black neighborhoods look at friendship and look at friendship that is more like family, that is more like you share mothers and you come over anybody's houses whenever you want, open doors, eat whatever, those types of relationships, how close you grow, uh, what that means as you navigate the outside world. And when I say outside world, I mean the white world. I have to warn you, you need to check your white fragility at the door if you're going to pick up this collection. This, these poems are not really for us. However, they are powerful and raw and speak to so many things that we should hear. Um, I didn't believe it was as strong of a collection as Don't Call Us Dead, um, but it was, it was very good and I'm, I'm glad I listened to it. Smith is a very good spoken word artist. And if you go on YouTube and listen to Dear White America, that is brilliant. So I, I suggest you go and do that. The next one I finished is uh, Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. De Javadi. I hope I pronounced that right. I read this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler in honor of Women in Translation Month. This is the story of Kamiya, who is a um, young Iranian woman who is you see her first in a fertility clinic and as she's in the waiting room at the fertility clinic you start to learn her backstory you learn the, the history of her family and this is going back generations it there's a little bit of mythology there's a little bit of type of magical fantastical stuff going on i wouldn't necessarily call it magical realism but there's a lot of um mythologizing your ancestors and that type of thing. So she's she's putting the past up against her present and we learn about her siblings, her parents. She is the youngest daughter of two Iranian revolutionary parents. She talks about what her childhood was like. She talks about um, what it meant to be brought up in a household where you were always surrounded by political activists and refugees and revolutionaries and what that all meant. Um, we discover why she's at the fertility clinic. We discover her present. We discover the relationship with her sisters. And it was very good. This is translated from the French by Tina Cover. The translation is incredible. It did not read like a translated novel for me. It was so smooth and so well written. Um, and I was I was kind of entranced by the book. There's one of my pet peeves is this is a novel and it has footnotes. You can see this right here. Um, there's footnotes and I hate footnotes in a novel. But with this one, there was a lot of history in the footnotes because um, it is the author trying to explain to a general reader what these historical events, talking about the Iranian Revolution, Arab Spring, all of that. So those were actually educational and helpful to me. The novel was very interesting. It was so well written, very smooth. Um, I really enjoyed this book and I think Britta and I both um, felt the same way about it. So that was very good. The next one I finished I can't talk about. It's The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, and I read this for 
uh, the finals of the Book 2 Prize in Fiction. The next one, I almost DNF'd this one, but I went back to it and read most of it, so it counts. This is Short Stories by Latin American Women, edited by Celia Correras de Zapata. And it's The Magic and the Real is the subtitle. This is a short story collection. Each story is translated by a different translator, and there are many in here. Um, it's a combination of stories that talk about um, realism and magical realism and fantastical elements um, and reality, pragmatism and, and everything. I read half of the book. I read the, all the stories in the first half and it started to become kind of a chore for me to pick up the collection and I was not having a good time. So I thought I was going to DNF it. But what I did was I picked it back up and I, I selected specific stories in the last half to read most of the shorter ones. Um, and so I read the majority of the book. I basically skim read the remaining stories. Some of them I was not at all interested after reading the first couple of paragraphs, um, but I did read most of the book. I didn't love it, um, but there's definitely some good stuff in there. I just, I didn't love it. The next one, and that was also in honor of Women in Translation. The next one is called, is an audio that I listened to again for Women in Translation Month, and it's called In Search of a Name. This was translated from the Dutch, and I don't have the translator's name. I will put it in a text here at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to try to pronounce the author's name. Her name is Marjolein von Heemstra. Marjolein, Marjolein, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's spelled M-A-R-J-O-L-I-J-N, von Heemstra and it was translated from the Dutch. This was the story of a young pregnant woman who is having a boy and her grandmother gives her a ring that was passed down to her from a great uncle that she never met before he died. Because the, she knows she's having a boy, the entire extended family is trying to convince her to name her son after this great uncle who she's never met because he is the family hero. His, his heroism is a legacy, heroism from World War II. The story goes that he um, bombed and killed a Nazi sympathizer and um, a traitor to the Dutch people. So she doesn't really know if she likes this man's name and her partner, who she only names as D, um, I'm not sure if it's her husband or not, but they don't really like this name. So she's trying to get more about his history and his background and what part he played in the war for the Dutch resistance. And she's, it, there's very little information that her family can give her over about this great uncle whose name is Franz. And so she starts to go and do some research and she's looking him up. She's trying to find historical evidence of his time in the war. She's trying to find any anything that points to the events of this bombing where he killed this Nazi sympathizer. And along with that, it, she's, she's talking about her advancing pregnancy. And she go, it goes by weeks, 26 weeks left to go, 24 weeks left to go and that type of thing. So we, we, we read her story of the history of her great uncle and we also read her story in her present of her advancing pregnancy. For whatever reason, the house is filled with mosquitoes and they can't figure out why they always have mosquitoes. So they go and they try to buy spray and they, they buy one of those buzzing tennis rackets that you can kill bugs with. And there's constantly a ton of mosquitoes in their house. I don't know what that had to do with the story. And I'm thinking, what metaphor are those mosquitoes representing? Is it representing that the baby is sucking the blood out of her? Is it representing that the pregnancy is sucking the life out of her? I don't know. She does sound very ambivalent about this pregnancy. And quite honestly, she starts to sound whiny. It's like, yes, you are going to be tired. Yes, you're going to feel sick. Yes, your feet are going to be swollen. Because her questions throughout the book are, why do I have to deal with this? And blah, blah, blah. Because you're pregnant. That comes with the territory. And um, it's a very short book. It's probably in print a little over 200 pages. So I, 
as she as a narrator, as a character, is exceptionally whiny. They did exist. They did end up finding the source of the mosquitoes, and it's like, why would you not have known that in advance? You're adults. You should have known that. So they fixed the mosquito problem. Um, I'm going to spoil the ending for this book because I was so pissed. So here's the spoiler alert right here. If you don't want to know the end of this book, then fast forward or switch off. Um, if I remember, I will try to put the time, the time it, down below where you can fast forward to. So here's the spoiler. So she's pregnant through the whole book. By the end of the book, she does find out her great uncle's history, which I will not reveal. But by the end of the book, the whole point of this story is so they can find a name for their son. The very, very end, the last three sentences, she's she has her son. They haven't named him yet. They're about to leave the hospital. The nurse turns around and she says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He has a name. And the nurse smiles and says, okay, I'll go get a pen and a piece of paper. And that's it. They don't even tell you what his name is. They don't reveal what they decided to name him. Are you freaking kidding me? This was ridiculous. And I had so many issues with this character throughout this short book that I was so frustrated and ah, I just, mm, no, didn't like it. Can you tell? So <laughs> the last book I finished, again, I can't talk about it. It's for the book two prize in fiction. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Now these are the finals, so I can't do, say anything about it, can't give you any hints or signals as to what I thought about it. Now, I unfortunately had some DNFs this past week. Just wait, just wait. My first one is Territory of Light by Yuko Tsushima, and this is translated by Geraldine Harcourt. This is a tiny, slim little novella that I started to buddy read with Britta Bowler, but I got halfway through and I just was not enjoying it. So I decided, uh, nope, even though it's so short, I just wanted to stop. So I stopped reading it. I do believe she finished it. Um, this is the story of a young Japanese woman whose husband has left her and their toddler daughter. He's still in contact, but he has since moved on with another woman. And she is kind of figuring out her way after the separation. They haven't been divorced yet. She's talking about the apartment that she needs to find and they need to separate their lives. So she's finding this apartment that is filled with light. The thing I did not like about it was the description of her, the relationship with her little daughter. Um, it wasn't, the chapters did not flow well together and the, the language was not um, smooth. And in a translated novel that often, if I, if I notice that's happening or if that's what I feel is happening, I lose interest very quickly. And I think that's what happened with that book. Okay, here's my other DNF. No, 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 no. I, uh, Susanna Clark, Piranesi. Um, this was written 16 years after Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I also DNF'd. And I was buddy reading this with Freddie from Sluggish Reader. We also tried to buddy read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. Both of us DNF'd it. I should have known better. I should have known better. I should not have picked up this book. Um, this is the story of the title character, Piranesi, who is a human man living in this crazy, um, endless, infinite, broken down mansion. The bottom floor is flooded by the ocean, the second floor is the livable space, and the third floor is the sky and the atmosphere. Um, it's a fantasy, not even magical realism, mostly fantastical uh, mystery. And Piranesi is a happy-go-lucky, naive, optimistic kind of guy. Every single um, section, there it's broken up into books and then sections, it's broken up into parts and then sections within the part. And every part has a title, like right here. And then underneath it, it says, entry for the 17th day of the fifth month in the year the albatross came to the Southwestern Halls. So it's written in journal entries. The next one, entry for the 18th day of the fifth month in the year of the, the albatross came to the southwestern halls. This one, entry for the 19th day of the fifth month in the year the albatross came to the southwestern halls. 
Why? Why is that being done? Why is she choosing to use that literary technique? Is it even a literary technique or is it just an annoyance to the reader? It was to this reader and I, I could not continue. I was irritated and just felt like it was inflated and she was trying very hard to be super clever. I just did not like it. Since DNFing it, I went through and I watched other reviews. I looked at all the spoilers. I read all the reviews on Goodreads and online. Um, I am an outlier. I am a minority because so many people have loved this book for all the reasons that I don't like this type of novel. I also did not like The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I don't like whimsy in novels and I should have known better because that's basically what this book is. It's kind of a fantasy slash mystery slash there's a reveal at the end. Um, there's a whole bunch of kind of biblical allegory in this book. There is a lot here talking about good and evil. There is a lot here talking about um, different revelations that the character finds out about. I, no, 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 I didn't like it. So, and I'm not sorry, no, I'm not sorry. That's it for what I finished and what I DNF'd. Very quickly, what am I currently reading? I am still reading The Illumination of Ursula Flight um, by Anna Marie Crowhurst. I have not gotten very far because I've put it on the back burner a little bit. I'm on the beginning of chapter four. I really enjoyed the first three chapters, so I will definitely be getting to this. I don't know if I'll finish it in August, but I will definitely continue with that. I am also listening to on audio, Call Them By Their True Names, in American Crises by Rebecca Solnit, who is a feminist essayist. And by the time this video goes up, I'm probably going to be like 80% through the audio. Um, what else? Oh, I'm reading The Memory Police on my Kindle by Yoko Ogawa for Women in Translation Month. Um, and again, I'll try to put, I'll put the translator's name when I wrap up the book. And then Freddie and I, because we DNF'd Piranesi, are picking up a backlist book, Birdsong by Sebastian Fox. And I've had this on my shelf for a long time. And he and I both expressed an interest in reading it. So we're going to replace Piranesi with Birdsong and read this one as a buddy read. Whew. If you've heard the hum through the video, I've got my AC on and my fan on. It's like 95-ish here today. And the garbage truck just went by. If you heard the great big rumbling and grumbling. Uh, lots of noise here. Lots of noise. So that's my Gigantor, my bookish week. Um... I'm not sure if I'm going to finish anything next week. I only have one more book left to go for the Book 2 Prize Finals in Fiction, and that is The Death of Vivek Oji, which I am going to be picking up in September. Um, and that's it. I might even be able to go use book shopping tomorrow morning with my daughter. Um, and I am going out to lunch. We're meeting my mother-in-law for lunch, and I will be getting orange cream cake, which is the cake I was supposed to get for my birthday, which my oldest daughter replaced but the the cake she did bring was pretty damn good so i was happy with that but i will get my slice of orange cream cake let me know down below what you thought of any of the books and if you've read any of them if you want to battle it out over piranesi 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 i did this the last time too um let me know what you think in the comments below i thank you so much for watching this far and i'll see you in the next video bye everybody